And we are back with more IGN Live at E3 2013. Follow us on Twitter at IGN and make sure you use the hashtag E3 2013 because that's what these celebrities do. And you want to be a celebrity, right? Of course you do. Come on, don't be silly. Now, right now, let's look at a game that freaked out everyone in the IGN office, myself included. This is Outlast. Philippe, as I live and breathe, how you doing? <laughs> Good and you? Good. You're a jerk. <laughs> you get us all in this dark room, we're all, ah, ah, monsters jumping out. That's what we're in business for. Make uh, people apparently, suffer. apparently, and it's, <laughs> business is booming. You're coming to the PlayStation 4, that's huge news. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, after the PAX demo, everything uh, went uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Sony called us, they wanted, to, they wanted us to come to E3, and uh, yeah, we're pretty happy to and be here. here you are, you brought your demo, we're going to look at it. Uh, was that, did you expect that when you made it to PAX, you're showing the game, and it starts connecting with people, that you start getting contact uh, with Ah, we're them? flabbergasted. I mean, yeah. in, when we started this, we just wanted to make a game that we would be happy to work on, and so far the reaction is overwhelming. Yeah. So, for I always talk about this, my mom watches the show and has no idea what's happening. In a nutshell, what is Outlast? So it's a survival horror game, no combat, you're a reporter, uh -huh. and uh, you get a tip from an anonymous informant that something fishy is going on at the asylum. And you go there, and pretty quickly you realize probably a better idea to just leave, but it's already too late. You're yeah. stuck inside. Well, the reporter's real dedicated. We're showing the demo we played at IGN when we made the Outlast video that we all got scared at. He breaks in here pretty soon through a window, and I'm like, as soon as I jiggle the doorknob on the front door and it doesn't open, I'm like, peace. I'm not going in there. I don't know what's going on. This well, he's a dedicated reporter. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, I'm not. I, I immediately cashed out and started talking about video games here. I'm like, it's good enough for me, man. So. When you're making a game like this, a horror game that isn't combat, that's this, that, and the other, where, how did the idea come about, and then where did you go for more inspiration? Uh, when we left our jobs and we made a list of all the ideas we thought would be interesting, yeah. uh, and horror was at the top of the list, Amnesia had just come out, uh, we liked it a lot, we liked the approach of having no combat, so we figured that would be our starting point, and Hugo, the art director, I uh, came up with the idea of the night vision after watching a, a clip from uh, Chris Cunningham and the Affect Twins called Robert Johnny. Uh -huh. And so that was the, that was the starting point. And uh, you know, we wanted to make a horror game for a long time, just uh, couldn't do it. And now that we're doing it for our own company, it's great. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's got to be a, a lot of freedom to go out there and it's like, all right. So like, how messed up are you guys in the head that you're coming up with this stuff? <laughs> Well, that's probably you know the, the funniest thing because we we're laughing in the in the studio when we're working and uh, you know there's uh, there's going to be some crazy stuff happening in the game and uh, hopefully uh, like I said earlier we're in business of making people suffer and uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie American Psycho yeah the scene uh, with the U.S. and the and the news uh -huh. so you won't be the one with the action <laughs> <laughs> see like right here I walk in and there's bodies peace I'm not going to go any deeper into this <laughs> guy keeps on going. Have you talked at all about the story beyond what you've already talked about beyond? Uh, like, oh, who are the creatures or anything? Is that all left up to the player to find out later on? Yeah, players will find out more about, uh, about that. I mean, they're going to uh, find out what's happening to these patients, what sort of experiments have been doing to them, gotcha. who's behind those experiments. And we're trying to build uh, some kind of uh, uh, backstory that will help us do DLCs, sequels, even prequels. So uh, yeah, this is just a starting point. How hard is it to demo this game and get people excited about it? Because you don't want to ruin it, right? I mean, you don't want everybody to know where the jumps are going to be. No, it's, we were really, really concerned when we came here with so, so much noise and lights and all that, but we got a few screens, people jump, so they seem to be getting into it. You know, uh, sound and music help a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. And I heard you, you scared Peter Molyneux away. Yes, yes. Friend of the show, Peter Molyneux. Turns out he's a coward. <laughs> Greg Miller can finish the demo. Peter can't. Challenge. <clears throat> now what's interesting, at least for me, because I'm a huge uh, PlayStation fan, this is being played on the PlayStation 4. We're seeing Circle Button. We're seeing this. It looks just like the PC version. It, was it an easy conversion? Is it just easy I, to flip a switch? Or? Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And we're also working with the Zombie Studios, the guys doing uh, Black Light. Yeah, I know them well. They they're, keep stealing uh, IGN employees. Yeah, so like they, they're using the Unreal Engine as well. Yeah and they're helping us to uh, port the, the game on the PS4. So, I mean, being an independent studio, do you see, what's your read on the next gen? Like, you're, you're, you're with PlayStation right now, right? But I, even Microsoft with Xbox One, we're doing these independent studios, we're trying to get them to make games and stuff. Is this really the best time to be an independent creator because of those systems? 
I think it's a, you know, it's a really good time because there are so much opportunity and different ways to reach your, your audience. Yeah. That's something that's been going on in the movie industry for a while. You, know, you could, right. you could uh, adjust your concept and your budget and find your audience. And now with all these different platforms, it's possible for games too. Yeah. Now here's where you got me. I, I've been fine. I've been creeped out. And then I go in the library. I start thinking it's like a Ghostbusters. Remember <laughs> Ghostbusters in the library? I'm like, oh, all right, no big deal. And I come around here, I'm like, ah, right, great. Dead bodies. Can I go this way? No, another dead body. And like, oh, there's a path over there. A bunch of dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, there it was. That's when I yelled. <laughs> That's when you got me. <sighs> and that was when I was like, ah, oh. coming in. It's got, it's so weird, right? Like you go in knowing it's a horror game. All right, they're gonna try to scare me. Something's gonna be around the next corner. That even knowing that, knowing you're trying yeah, to get me, you still get me. No, I think it's a, you know, that's why you know, we wanted to make a horror game in the first place because we uh, uh, you know our past experiences have been with action adventure. We like to convey emotions, and uh, with horror, it's a very effective way to uh, convey strong emotions. So, uh, what's the development process been like? This, how long have you been working on it, and what are we targeting right now for release? So we've been in production for a year now. Uh, it took us like 18 months to find uh, to find the money. Yeah, and uh, we started. You're checking production. couch cushions, <laughs> looking around, <laughs> My family, friends, and all that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've been in full production for a year, and currently with be between alpha and beta. Okay. Okay. And uh, the game will come out on PC end of summer, and PS4 will be early 2014. Oh, right. Great. Great. So, how long did you, is the average playthrough, or what are you aiming for? Right, because there's got to be that sweet spot, I imagine, with yeah. a horror game. Well, we were aiming for five hours, okay. uh, but we had our first uh, complete walkthrough uh, a week ago, uh -huh. and it might be a little longer. Yeah, overproducing, that's what you want. <laughs> I, oh, this is the creepy part, too. This random guy. Oh, I don't want to. Everybody can check this uh, out. You're going to see that ca this character quite a lot in the, in the game. Oh, good. That, that's good. <laughs> Great. I'm going to find the really creepy dude all the time. That's what I... The guy with the eyeballs or missing eyeballs. I can't even tell. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we call him the priest, but he's not really a priest. No. He thinks he's a priest. Okay, well, that's good, too. And you'll, you'll get to find out who he thinks his god is. <laughs> How... I mean, you know, this demo shows the priest. And then what do you call the big dudes that are going to come up here in a little bit? Uh, we call him the soldier because his background, he used to be a soldier in Iraq. Torturing people and his... How do you switch? So, do you have a story then for everybody in here? I thought he was oh, just yeah. some kind of mutant monster. No, no, no. The, that's the thing. I mean, you only get a glimpse of the asylum in the demo. Yeah. But uh, at some point, you're going to wake up uh, in the prison block, and there's going to be tons of patients around you. And, uh, you know, we really want to play with the, uh, you not knowing what to expect from these patients. Sure, sure, sure. So it's like if you meet Hannibal Lecter on the street, you wouldn't know he's a criminally insane person. So it's the same thing here. You see somebody down the corridor, you don't know if they're going to attack you. They're gonna just ignore you, talk to you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, some some bits, some sections will be uh, more about you in the dark, uh, alone, and other sections will be about being surrounded by patients. That's really fascinating. I thought for sure it'd be more like this, like I'm creeping down dark hallway after dark hallway, and I'm sure there is a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't really expect there to no, be. No, we're gonna vary the pacing in the mood. Uh, like we got a prison block, uh, we've got a building that uh, uh, that burned down like uh, 30, 40 years ago, where it's never been renovated. renovated. You got the sewers, you go outside with uh, all the light, the storm, storm thunderstorm, lightning, yeah, yeah. rain, all that. Interesting. Glad to see that, that no one has kept this asylum up in 30 to 40 years. <laughs> You're just getting the tip now. Something's bad over there. Something's not working over there. So, you know, there's a lot of urban legends and crazy stories. It seems like every town has some abandoned mental hospital. And then you look into some of them. Some of them, you know, have horrible backstories and stuff. Did you go through and read accounts of that to try to figure oh, yeah, out? Yeah, we did a lot of research. Uh, we thought uh, what we could be interesting is the uh, MK Ultra program that took place uh, in the six, in the sixties after the Second World War. Uh -huh. And uh, but back then, uh, they uh, they decided that uh, when the war was over, that all the scientists, the Nazi scientists, they should bring him back here because otherwise some other country would get them. Sure, sure. So they started doing all these funky programs. Uh, there was even a branch in Montreal at the McGill University. And uh, yeah, we figured that would be a good starting point. So th that was the sort of experiments that was going on at the asylum back then. And uh, when uh, what experiments were they doing back then? 
uh, behavior control. Uh, so trying to find ways to manipulate people and have them do different things. And you'll find out in the game how it connects with uh, the experiments they're doing today. Uh, oh God, even, <laughs> even now. And like that, that dude does not look like a soldier from Iraq anymore. <laughs> All right, he has seen some stuff here apparently in this asylum. Yeah, he's, he's like our predator, you know, he's following you in, a, in the asylum, you will see more than once. Yeah. And that, so now we get into this part where it's about, in a way, hiding from him, right? Or is yeah. that, that's, you, since you can't fight, your only way to get away is to try to trick him, right? Yeah, it's pretty much like a stealth game, but in the R setting. So you have to either go around or run away, hide. We use lockers, beds, desks, uh, fireplaces. Fireplaces, nice. <laughs> And it's, you know, sound plays a really important part, like right. when you're hiding, you need to uh, uh, hear the footsteps, figure out is he going away, is he coming, coming back. Towards me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's no radar, no HUD, nothing out no, of it, it's, no, it's no. all we in your senses. It. Yeah, it's all, no, immersion is really important, uh, especially when you do a horror game. You call so. it immersion, I call it screwing with people. <laughs> you guys really love screwing with people, screwing with people is important to you. <laughs> We want you to suffer. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and pay for it. <laughs> yeah, this section here in the in the full game will play a, uh, an important part. So you won't be just going through it. You'll have stuff to do in this. In the I was gonna say, yeah, for you know, for demos, especially for just giving people a taste of the game. How much will this differentiate, you think, from the real game? Are you dropping certain things in here just to showcase what the game can do? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the demo is pretty much like uh, the beginning of the game uh -huh. and then a, a section later, later on that we just glued together. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, you will have stuff to do in the, in the, in the basement because the electricity will be turned off by the piece. So since you're making the, each character have this like backstory, right, yeah. of like the souls or the priest, am I finding documents and tape recordings that are giving me... Yes, we didn't include those in the demo, sure. but you will be finding files, reports, medical reports on, the, on, the, on patients. Uh, also, your cam with your camcorder, you're going to be recording stuff yeah. that uh, will give you backstory uh, about what's going on in the asylum. Uh, exit, game over. Yeah, oh, you're free. You're, yeah, it's all we're no <laughs> soldier again. This guy's everywhere, and he just smushes your head off, uh, rips it off. And uh, this is uh, scientifically true. You do, you do see for several seconds after your head. Yeah, yeah, the guillotine, and the blinking and stuff. <laughs> I don't know, Philippe, you're a messed up man. <laughs> One more time, when does that last come out? Uh, PC end of summer and uh, PS4 early 2014. Thank you so much, man. Thanks to you. Have a great show. You too. Thank you for the demo. Uh, coming up next, we're going to demo Killzone Mercenary. Vita fans will definitely want to take a look. Back in return.